Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus and on this video we're talking about how while th the things we discuss on this channel it may seem, I don't know, possibly cutting edge, it's really not. It's been debated for hundreds and actually thousands of years and there is one particular subject which I think really encapsulates one of the main debates that we see in the spirituality forums the life after death forums involves dualism versus idealism and there may be variations of what we uh, refer to as idealism there's a close cousin called panpsychism and some other forms of that philosophy which uh, we'll go into later that Plato spoke about however it kinda of boils down to debates between Plato and Aristotle concerning Aristotle's view of dualism Plato's view of uh, essentially non-dualism and how that, how both of these subjects relate to an afterlife and actually specifically relate to the common debates that we see on the forums talking about these subjects and sp specifically the very common debate concerning uh, the ability to have a physical experience when you are no longer living in this body right so uh, something that I've talked a lot about in the books and that I've probably ranted about quite a few times on this channel are people who are essentially spiritualist writers um, new age writers uh, people who are involved in this crazy little genre of information who uh, make claims that for example uh, all people, people who cross over, people who pass away, people who, you know, even despite getting verified contacts from the other side, from the beyond, they are sort of formless essence. They're not, they're not like a tangible person anymore. So when a medium says that Uncle Jerry is playing golf, then that's that's just like a almost like a hallucination or or a projection being created for your own comfort. And some mediums even say this. Now there's another whole school of thought that, that's the opposite of this. Well, not the opposite, but it's the um, you know it's it, it, it's a, a much more literalist interpretation, being that you can leave this physical body and then essentially be in a new sort of duplicate or new version of the body you're in now. And some of the sources for that includes basically most sources of direct spirit communication, whether we're talking about Swedenborg or we're you know, going up through the ages of spiritualism up to the modern day and then if you want to maybe look at my own books my own experiences the experiences of astral explorers astral projectionists we kind of say variations of this because that's the um, experience we find ourselves in so if we go out of our body now sometimes we can have a formless experience where we're just kind of bouncing around as a ball of light but very often we'll find ourselves in a body that's almost identical to the body we're in now. It's a very curious phenomenon because it kind of defies common sense. And so I think what happens is that people by default tend to be dualists when they attempt to absorb or understand this information. And therein lies the debate. So first I want to reference a post by Ed Anderson on the Afterlife Topics forum that sort of encapsulates what we're talking about because I hadn't thought of it quite this way in a while until Ed sort of pointed me in the right direction again. So let's let's take a look at that post and uh, figure out what what this is all about. Why the dualism versus panpsychism or dualism versus idealism, like even if people don't know what those labels are, why that is like the primary debate, the primary issue in spiritual metaphysics right now. Uh, before we go further, we talk about this kind of stuff in these sort of like long, long form uh, podcast episodes here at Afterlife Topics. We've been doing this a couple of years now. We have the big group on Facebook. We have my books and uh, um, yeah, and uh, you know it's still a growing community. So a special shout out to all you guys helping keep this going. If you uh, subscribe to this channel, if you haven't done so yet, it really helps out. Leaving a like, sharing the video, as well as um, if you want to get involved more and learn about astral projection and, and join uh, our private discussion groups and things like that, then I encourage you to become a patron over at the Patreon page or also the PayPal page, which is at afterlifetopics.com forward slash university. It's where you can get involved if you want to work with me and, and uh, do more in this area, support this work while I 
basically heal my body from a terrible viral infection and just take it easy here in Los Angeles. Hopefully someday I'll return to traveling, you know, who knows. But uh, the, I think the body, my body has to heal and the world has to heal. And then we'll get back to the cool uh, on location travel videos that I usually do here. Okay, anyway, with all that out of the way, let's look at Ed's post. So this is in response to a video that I, I came out with a few weeks ago, which was concerning uh, the problems in near-death experience groups where they get very puritanical. And when someone described a kind of like a sexual experience during an NDE, everyone sort of attacked this person because of the tendency for sort of religious puritanism to get mixed in with um, objective spirituality. So Ed made an interesting response to this. He says, I see this as an issue of mind-body dualism, the idea that the mind and body are entirely separate. This goes all the way back to Plato and was held, held as the dominant belief for ages. Descartes was famous for it in the Enlightenment too. You frame it, being me, as puritanical and associate with fundamentalist Christians, but interestingly it was actually Christianity that objected to the mind-body dualism. Christianity talked about a spiritual body, uh, in uh, caps, about Jesus rising in bodily form, eating and drinking with people after he was dead. Jesus used graphical, physical terms to talk about being saved, eating my flesh and drinking my blood. And the basic Christian teaching is that we will be reborn in resurrected bodies, not as, excuse me, disembodied spirits. Actually, the Christian church considers the mind-body dualism to be heresy because it's contrary to basic doctrine. And let me say one thing. This is obviously, when we talk about um, existence in a post-animate form, a post-corporeal form, I think that is what Jesus was originally talking about. But Christian fundamentalists take that literally in a way that obviously has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So this is not... You know, I'm not. I am not a proponent of Christian necromancy. The idea, the idea that people's, you know, people are um, uh, you know, hands clawing up from the cemeteries when uh, Jesus returns. Um, very interesting concept, which has no basis in reality. Um, Ed continues. Granted, many Christians still tend to think in dualistic terms because these ideas are so ingrained in the culture. I just want to point out that this idea of disembodied spirits doesn't originate in Christianity, and in fact Christianity teaches otherwise. Mind-body dualism goes back to Plato. Now what's interesting is that Plato specifically, and uh, let's, let's bring up everyone's favorite source of um, non-attributable information uh, or unre unreliable information, which is Wikipedia, uh, but Wikipedia is good for historical facts. Um, then let's pull up some more information about mind-body dualism and learn a little bit more about how this came into being. In the philosophy of the mind, mind-body dualism denotes either the view that mental phenomena are non-physical or that the mind and body are distinct and separate. Thus, it encompasses a set of views about the relationship between mind and matter, as well as between subject and object and is contrasted with other positions such as physicalism and inactivism in the mind-body problem. Physicalism being basically materialism, the idea that mind is body, body is mind, or mind doesn't exist, mind is just a side effect of the body, which is the position held by many scientists in this world today who discount on an a priori basis all spiritual phenomena that people experience, and it's why they're so aggressive in trying to debunk near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, after-death contact, reincarnation evidence, and uh, the whole litany of things that I talk about in my first book, or you can look up on Victor Zambit's website that he talks about. So why is there this sort of um, game of space invaders that the materialists or the academics have to play where there's there are constantly new waves of things coming along to challenge their beliefs. They have to spend all day trying to shoot them all down, terrified that one of those little invaders will will escape and you know and go past their defenses. Why are they playing a never ending game of space invaders? Probably because their whole worldview of physicalism would come crumbling down. And that's um, been the groundwork of that sort of uh, establishment and the power behind that establishment for centuries. 
So now to continue with this article, um, that's you know that's the mind-body problem as it plays out in academics. Aristotle shared Plato's view of multiple souls and further elaborated in a hierarchical arrangement corresponding to the distinctive functions of plants, animals, and people. A, nu a, a nutritive soul of growth and metabolism that all three share a perceptive soul of pain, pleasure, and desire that only people and other animals share and the faculty of reason that is unique to people only. In this view, a soul is the hylomorphic form of a viable organism, wherein each level of the hierarchy formally supervenes upon the substance of the preceding level. For Aristotle, the first two souls based on the body perish when the living organism dies, whereas remains an immortal and perpetual intellect part of the mind, also known as a floating orb of light. For Plato, however, the soul was not dependent on the physical body. He believed in metempsychosis, the migration of the soul to a new physical body. Dualism is closely associated with the thought of René Descartes, which holds that the mind is a non-physical and therefore non-spatial substance. Descartes clearly identified the mind with consciousness and self-awareness and distinguished this from the brain as the seat of intelligence. Hence. He was the first to formulate the mind-body problem in, which, in the form in which it exists today. Dualism is contrasted with various kinds of monism. Substance dualism is contrasted with all forms of materialism. But property dualism may be considered a form of emergent materialism or non-reductive physicalism in some sense. I don't know much about that, but it's interesting. So what's, what is really interesting about this is that dualism sort of opens the gateways to accepting an afterlife. And uh, some people hold Aristotle up a little bit um, as uh, somebody who upholds the more virtues of atheism because Plato was, I guess, more, more of a spiritualist type of person. He actually documents a near-death experience in one of his books, Ur. And uh, he held to a belief of more literal, like what you know, what we may think of as going to another world and still being able to exist in a distinctive uh, physical form in a, in a world that is distinctive and physical. But Aristotle, uh, in, in regard to dualism, was one of the first actually to you know um, take a stab as well. Like they didn't take a stab as well at materialism, so they may not fully be on the same page. But Aristotle was able to draw the boundaries of what materialism and non-materialism represented. And now René Descartes is much the same way. So it's interesting, these guys are not materialists. They were actually able to um, open the doorways of like objective spirituality in a kind of intellectual sense, showing that the mind or consciousness is not necessarily the brain, that there is a kind of... Uh, non-corporeal world of the intellect, world of the soul, world of consciousness, that once again, that opens the gates to allow certain phenomena, afterlife phenomena to exist. So what's interesting about uh, Plato is that, now keep in mind, once, as a quick digression, I'm more of an Aristotle guy than a Plato guy, especially in terms of like political matters, liberty, uh, some philosophical matters, I, uh, Plato, I think, has some strange kind of naive concepts, which I won't get into on this video. But when it comes to uh, spirituality, I think, I think Plato, you know, really, you know, first of all, is demonstrating how this stuff, even back then, it was the main, it was a major debate. Like just, just like people debate this stuff now on the internet, back then this was a major source of debate, and I would have definitely sided with Plato for his points about this. So the contrast really to dualism is, well, we call this metempsychosis, but I would also call this some form of idealism or panpsychism, notably idealism. If I had to describe my own um, philosophical view of nature, it would be idealism. Idealism is, uh, in, in essence, the concept that if everything is consciousness, so everything is de derived ultimately from consciousness, these are, you know, elements of consciousness being represented so you know so this is a phone that is an element also of consciousness so it has a physical form and shape but it's derived from you could say ultimate consciousness from god if you will and that consciousness derived form 
is processed through the consciousness of ourselves and it's sort of like this big virtual reality experience it's kind of like everything really is ones and zeros code energy and it all comes ultimately from uh, mind itself sort of creating you know we, we could call it you know to use computer terminology like ref it's refreshing uh, it, you know it's it's, <clears throat> it's continually refreshing reality there's no such thing as physical solid truly but it is uh, much like in that scene in the matrix right so when cypher is eating steak with uh, agent smith and he says i know the steak is not real but it sure tastes great and so that's a, you know kind of how i see idealism so the th reason that idealism has no issues with being in a physical solid body on the other side is because everything is consciousness everything is energy so it doesn't you know there is no cutoff point there isn't these there are no clear distinctions between uh, matters properties of matter and properties of the soul because properties of matter are properties of the soul so that means that you could be in a, in a mental existence disconnected from this physical reality and then just find out that you're still in a physical reality because a physical reality is actually just a manifestation of mental existence if that makes sense so there's absolutely no reason that you know if lights go out in this body that you wouldn't just wake up in another tangible real solid physical existence because it's all energy it's all being mentally created anyway just like here there's a certain illusion of solidarity where we may think that what's around us is a permanent fixture on the environment and then as we explore perhaps deep into quantum physics we'll know that is not the case so what we learn from this is that dualism opens the doors but it's doesn't account for many spiritual experiences and Plato in a sense was so the main issue the main debate that people deal with in this in this area are people who are stuck in the, the dualist thinking about this subject and dualism is so ingrained in philosophy that there is a tendency for people to just automatically digest and interpret information in this field from a dualist perspective what this means is again the floating orb of light idea it's the idea that when you die here you since you, because of dualism you're now in a realm only of the mind and all of the you know based on based exactly on aristotle's points of view realms of biology realms of, uh, of, of physicality are now forever disconnected because the mind and body are completely separate so being in a realm of the mind only means that realm is essentially going to be vaporous immaterial and akin to your own thoughts so it's almost like a deceased person would become pure consciousness without form or function or ability to operate in a form in a, in a form-based way which is again the assumption held by many people who accept an afterlife but refuse to look at it in the more literal terms and so they also will believe that the only way you can again experience physical tangibility is you have to reincarnate so now you have dualism marrying itself to buddhism and justifying certain buddhist views but what this comes back to is philosophy and religion not necessarily reality because then when you go into tangible experiences astral experiences when you go into spirit communication experiences and many did many variations of near-death experiences you have people experiencing a tangible physical reality in a duplicate of the body they were in being transferred into this parallel dimension upon death of this physical body which would therefore disprove dualism and, and support idealism or panpsychism or Plato's concepts ultimately um, metempsychosis of this sort of emergent property of a of a secondary body that consciousness produces which is what we call the astral body which again it's I think it's difficult for many people to grasp that this is really what's happening Christians by going back to the original post fundy Christians have this sort of rough idea and the you know the ones who don't necessarily believe in christian necromancy but they believe you're going you know you're going to live in heaven but you know you're, you're playing a harp so you're in a cloud you're playing a harp so you have to have fingers to play the harp so you're in a, you're in like a heavenly body 
And so this again would you know, this again would would support kind of their version of that. But uh, the reality of it is it, it is different than that. Obviously, it is uh, it relates to it relates to the multidimensional properties of consciousness and how you need a physical form to be able to relate to a particular environment that you're in, and that these astral environments we find ourselves in are different but similar to here, and ultimately. Um, one of the you know, main lessons we learn from spirit communication is that you can be on that side and be shocked at how similar in some ways it can be to the existence that you had here. Obviously, I'll talk more about this in future videos as well as you can look back to all the archives of videos on this channel talking about this subject. So with that said, I guess I'm going to get going here, but of course you can get involved over at the Facebook group, pick up a book like Understanding Life After Death of the Afterlife and Beyond. I'll be around here if you want to get in touch with me, of course, uh, through various means down below in the channel description. You can find info about that. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.